Let's get right into it. Number 8. The Like Button Imagine creating something so simple, yet so destructive, that it changes how human brains work forever. That's exactly what happened in 2009 when Facebook introduced the Like Button. Just a tiny thumbs up icon seems harmless. This little button turned out to be more addictive than sugar, caffeine, and maybe even some illegal substances. You post something, and your brain starts craving those likes. Every time someone hits that button, your brain gets a tiny shot of dopamine the same chemical that makes chocolate and winning feel good. It's like a slot machine in your pocket, but instead of coins, it spits out social validation. Scientists have found that some people check their phones over 300 times a day just to see if anyone liked their posts. This isn't some accident. The like button was specifically designed to be addictive. Former Facebook employees have admitted they used the same psychological tricks that casinos use to keep people gambling. And it's not just adults. Teenagers are getting hit the hardest. Studies show that teens who get fewer likes on their posts show actual physical signs of stress. Their cortisol levels spike like they're being chased by a bear. But instead of a bear, it's just Sharon from math class not liking their selfie. Some kids are even deleting posts that don't get enough likes within minutes. It's like their self-worth has been reduced to a number on a screen. This tiny button has literally rewired how we think. People aren't just sharing what they want anymore. They're sharing what they think will get the most likes. It's turned us all into tiny social media marketing agencies for ourselves. So next time you're desperately refreshing your post to see if anyone else liked it, remember you're not alone. We're all trapped in this dopamine casino together. Number 7. The Infinite Scroll Imagine you're at an all-you-can-eat buffet. You tell yourself you'll just grab a small plate and be done. But the food just keeps coming. Before you know it, you've been there for two hours and you're in a food coma. That's basically what Azza Raskin created back in 2006. He invented the Infinite Scroll while working at Humanized Incorporated. Social media feeds just keep going when you swipe up. He made it to solve a problem. Back then, websites had clunky next-page buttons that ruined the flow of browsing. Raskin thought, why not make it smooth and seamless? Little did he know he was creating digital crack cocaine. Our brains are wired to look for stopping points. It's like how you finish a chapter in a book and think, okay, time for a break. But the infinite scroll removed all those natural breaks. There's no chapter end, no next page button, just an endless stream of content. The average person now spends over three hours per day just scrolling through social media. That's about 46 days per year of non-stop scrolling. You could learn a new language in that time. Raskin later admitted he feels guilty about his invention. He said it's like having invented the atomic bomb of attention spans. And he made exactly zero dollars from this invention that now controls billions of lives. Social media companies actually hire addiction experts. The same people who design casino slot machines now work on making your feed more addictive. They've basically put a casino in your brain, except instead of losing money, you're losing your life. Raskin's invention is so effective that even he can't resist it. The guy who created the infinite scroll has to use apps to limit his social media use. It's like Dr. Frankenstein running from his own monster. Number 6. Monoculture Farming Imagine you're a hungry bug flying over farmland in the 1800s. You see a few potatoes here, some corn there, maybe a patch of wheat. It's like trying to find food at a mall where every restaurant is in a different city. But then humans had this brilliant idea. What if we planted the same crop for miles and miles? Suddenly that bug's life got a whole lot easier. It's like someone took all the McDonald's in the world and put them right next to each other. This sounds efficient, and it is super efficient, until it isn't. Because when a single disease or pest finds your crop, it's basically won the lottery. It's like giving someone the password to every computer in the world. The Irish Potato Famine Ireland was growing pretty much one type of potato everywhere. Then this fungus shows up and finds an all-you-can-eat buffet that goes on forever. Within years, about a one million people died. The fungus didn't even have to work hard, but we didn't learn our lesson. Today, a huge percentage of all farmland is growing just a few crops like rice, corn, and wheat. That's like putting all your life savings into one really sketchy cryptocurrency. These mega crops are all clones of each other. If one plant is vulnerable to something, they all are. It's like having a billion identical twins with the same deadly peanut allergy. One jar of peanut butter could take out the whole family. Number 5. DDT In the middle of World War II, Soldiers were dying more from insects than from bullets. Mosquitoes spread malaria. Lice spread typhus. Then came a miracle powder called DDT. It was an incredibly effective insecticide. It killed almost any bug it touched. The military started spraying it everywhere. They dusted soldiers, civilians, 
and entire cities with it, and it worked. Cases of malaria and typhus plummeted. The inventor, Paul Miller, even won a Nobel Prize. After the war, DDT became a household name. Farmers used it to protect their crops. Cities sprayed it to kill mosquitoes. It was hailed as a wonder of modern science. But there was a problem. DDT doesn't break down. It stays in the environment for decades. It washed into rivers and oceans. Small fish absorbed it. Bigger fish ate the small fish. Birds ate the bigger fish. With each step up the food chain, the concentration of DDT got higher. This had a devastating effect on birds of prey, like the bald eagle. The DDT caused the shells of their eggs to become thin and brittle. When the mother birds sat on their nests, the eggs would break. America's national symbol was pushed to the brink of extinction. A scientist named Rachel Carson wrote a book called Silent Spring. It exposed the dangers of DDT and sparked the modern environmental movement. DDT was eventually banned in the U.S. and many other countries. The miracle chemical that saved millions of lives was also an ecological disaster. Number 4. Agent Orange Imagine you invent a weed killer. Its job is to clear away unwanted plants. Now imagine the military takes your weed killer and turns it into a chemical weapon. That's the story of Agent Orange. It was developed by a guy named Arthur Galston. He was just trying to find a way to make soybeans grow faster. He found a chemical that, in high concentrations, caused plants to lose their leaves. He even warned that using it on a large scale could have ecological consequences. But the military didn't listen. During the Vietnam War, the U.S. military had a problem. The dense jungles were providing perfect cover for enemy soldiers, so they decided to get rid of the jungle. They sprayed millions of gallons of Agent Orange over Vietnam. The forests died, the crops died, but the real damage was to the people. Agent Orange was contaminated with a chemical called dioxin. It's one of the most toxic substances known to man. The fallout included cancer, birth defects, and a whole list of other horrible diseases. Millions of Vietnamese people were exposed. Hundreds of thousands of children were born with horrific birth defects. American soldiers who handled the chemical also got sick. Galston, the inventor, was horrified. He spent the rest of his life campaigning against the use of herbicides in warfare. He saw his creation, meant to help plants, become a tool of destruction. Number 3. Radium Dials In the early 1900s, radium was the new miracle element. People thought it could cure cancer, make you stronger, and even make you glow with health, literally. So, companies started putting it in everything. Toothpaste, water, chocolate, you name it. But its most famous use was making watch dials glow in the dark. This was a huge deal for soldiers in World War I. They could finally see the time in their dark trenches. The job of painting these dials went to young women, who became known as the Radium Girls. They were told the radium paint was perfectly safe. To get a fine point on their brushes, they were instructed to lick the tips. This was a technique they called lip dip paint. With every lick, they were swallowing a tiny dose of poison. Soon, the girls started getting sick. Their teeth fell out. Their jaws literally rotted away. Their bones became so brittle, they would break from just walking. Their damaged bones would actually glow in the dark. When they went to the doctor, they were told it was just syphilis, because obviously, a woman's health problems are always her own fault. But the radium girls fought back. They sued the company, even though they were dying. Their case changed labor laws forever. It made people realize that maybe, just maybe, putting radioactive stuff in your mouth isn't a great idea. Number 2. CFCs Remember our old friend, Thomas Midgley Jr., the guy who gave us leaded gasoline? Well, he's back. After poisoning the world with lead, he decided to tackle another problem. Refrigerators. Early refrigerators used toxic and flammable gases like ammonia and sulfur dioxide. If your fridge leaked, your house could explode or you could be poisoned. So Migley invented a new, non-toxic, non-flammable gas called Freon. It was a type of chlorofluorocarbon, or CFC. It was a miracle chemical, perfect for refrigerators, air conditioners, and aerosol sprays. Migley even demonstrated its safety by inhaling a lungful of Freon and blowing out a candle with it. He was really into inhaling his own inventions. For decades, everything was great. We had safe fridges and convenient spray cans, but there was a tiny problem nobody noticed. These CFCs were drifting up into the atmosphere, and up there, they were destroying the ozone layer. The ozone layer is like Earth's sunscreen. It protects us from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays. Without it, we'd all get skin cancer and cataracts. By the 1980s, scientists discovered a giant hole in the ozone layer over Antarctica. It was a global emergency. The world came together and banned CFCs in 1987. So, Thomas Midgley Jr. managed to create two of the most environmentally damaging inventions of the 20th century. 
He was a genius at solving one problem while creating a much, much bigger one. He later contracted polio and invented a system of ropes and pulleys to lift himself out of bed. He ended up getting tangled in the ropes and strangling himself to death. A fittingly ironic end for a man whose inventions caused so much unintended harm. Number 1. Dynamite Alfred Nobel was a chemist and engineer. He was working with a very unstable explosive called nitroglycerin. It was powerful, but it had a nasty habit of blowing up when you least expected it. Nobel wanted to make it safer to use for construction, like blasting tunnels and clearing mines. He experimented and found that mixing nitroglycerin with a fine, absorbent sand made it stable. He called his new invention dynamite. It was a huge success. It revolutionized construction and mining. But of course, humans are humans. It didn't take long for people to realize that something good at blowing up rocks is also good at blowing up people. Dynamite quickly became a weapon of war. It was used in bombs, torpedoes, and mines. Nobel was horrified. He was a pacifist and never intended for his invention to be used for killing. He once read an obituary for himself that was published by mistake. The headline called him The Merchant of Death. This shook him to his core. He didn't want to be remembered as the man who made mass destruction easier. So, he decided to use his massive fortune to create the Nobel Prizes, including the famous Nobel Peace Prize. It was his way of trying to balance the scales. He wanted to reward people who worked for the good of humanity. The creator of so much destruction is now famous for celebrating peace. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.